What's up guys, it's your boy Matty Matt with my man B3 here. He's a little tired today, so he's gonna let me take lead on this one. So here. welcome back to another kickin'. Shit. My back hurts too much. Graphic novel <laughs> review. <laughs> today for you guys, we have Aquaman Volume 6 Maelstrom, which is one of my favorite Aquaman ones that we've talked about today. I'd say it's my favorite, but I haven't read two of them yet, so... Yeah, fair. So, um, excluding Rebirth, of course. Um, so, this one picks up where the last left off. Um, there was a diver whose name was Coom, Coombs, C-O-O-M-B-S, weird name, who was uh, saved in our last issue, I believe? It wasn't really saved, because he was legally he, dead. He was legally dead. and then he got his brain was gone. He had experimented <laughs> on a Triton base. And um, at the beginning of this one, he we finally get to see what they did to him. And it's not pretty. He becomes super cool, though, but it's bad. It's real bad. So he is called the Chimera because he's been given essentially all of the genetic abilities of all of the most dangerous sea creatures out there. And, and he's, he's got the freaking Kraken's... Half yeah. of the Kraken's brain. Mm -hmm, to so, make up for lost brain tissue. Yeah, and his sea telepathy control sea life is stronger than Aquaman's. Mm -hmm. So Aquaman can't control sea life when he's around. It's really awesome, guys. It's a great conflict. Um, and as things progress, um, we've got conflicts with the Chimera and Aquaman and him having a showdown. And it's a very intense uh, showdown that happens over multiple times as they're I'm going to try to figure out what's going on. I'm going to try to avoid the spoilers as best I can. Because you need to go read this, guys. So, um, that's kind of actually... We're kind of divided into two halves on this one, in my opinion. We've got the first half focusing on Chimera. And the second half uh, focusing, again, on a little Atlantean history and some of the underlying issues with Arthur ruling Atlantis. Looking for his mommy. He misses his mommy. Atlantis is actually rejecting Arthur as a ruler. Like, um, not the people, like the physical, like the continent. buildings and shit. <laughs> so something about Atlantis actually stores the psychic energy of all of its inhabitants. And, um, bada bing bada boom, their perception of Aquaman actually changes how the continent responds to him. And fucking guest starring Martian Manhunter. Man because we said because, psych. Yeah, because... The Aquaman writers aren't confident enough with the sales numbers to have it just be him figure stuff out. Despite the fact that this was really good. It was really good, yeah. You could, I mean, they probably, you could have done something with just a stand-in Atlantean instead of Martian Manhunter, but it was nice to see Martian. I guess. I like John Jones fine. I mean, I thought he was, was a little anything. intense in the New 52, but he seemed fine in there, yeah. yeah. yeah it, didn't, it didn't really change anything. He wasn't very irrelevant. But we get some... Um, uh, some insight into Atlantean politic -y kind of stuff and history and culture. And Gorilla City! Yep, we get to go see Gorilla Grodd, too, which is fun. Um, it's got some great one-liners in this. Yeah, it went, it went all... He went all over the place, mm -hmm. and, and he found his mommy, and she tried to murder him. She did try to murder him. And then he saved her. And then he walked away. Yeah, and they just left her, and they kind of were like, oh... My essence is in this shell or this stone key thing. It's gonna stop the continent from rejecting you. Sure, and that's, that why is not? Ex that's explained a little bit. There. I'll take it. It's magic. Who cares? Exactly. Right? <laughs> Honestly, it was excellent. I really enjoyed all of the characters once again. I really like the Chimera. And from and, and a less biased opinion, yeah, it's pretty excellent. So, yeah, it's good. It's I good book. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> what is? Who wrote that? Jeff Parker. Um, this was yes, Jeff Parker. He did the last one too, right? Yes, he did. This was a he did uh, a back-to-back -back run on Aquaman, but the next one is not, in fact, by Jeff yeah. Parker. I think Parker's two volumes were the best ones for New Fifty Two Aquaman. So far, I think I agree. Yeah, I haven't eight. read Volume Two, but I read the rest of it. Eight is Jeff a Jones. close runner-up. We haven't talked about that one. I haven't even read eight. So. Yeah, we'll talk about that another day. But um, absolutely good. If you've enjoyed any Aquaman at all, this is a fantastic story. Yeah. I'm saying. And the next couple of times are going to be some more of his books. One you stole me money for, big boy. Yep, 20 bucks. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, Green Arrow. Oh, so much stuff I'm supposed to do. Volume 3, Emerald Outlaw from Rebirth. Uh, it's a very big step up from some of the other Green Arrow stuff. Yeah, it is better than the last two. But uh, that's it, guys. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share it on Facebook. Check him out on the SoundCloud. He's the Owl God. Get an owl head. Yeah, because I'm an owlicious bitch. Yeah, you already heard I got the body of a man in the head of a bird.
psh, psh, and then that would wake him up a little bit. Yeah, my back hurts so much, man. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.